Welcome everyone, Costine here with Grand Cafe in patch 4.0 and to talk about their caravan bug that I've already covered in previous videos. I have seen how far it can be taken in a campaign to ridiculous sums of money where you can generate hundreds of thousands per every single caravan and you can run those caravans very quickly. Now, I have finally figured out what exactly is really hap happening here with the wishing compass. So at the moment, if I look at my situation, I have rank one caravan masters. And if I were to send one of these caravan masters to a particular location, I could generate like 4,000 uh, 4, gold, 3,000, something along those lines. If I enable the whooshing compass, this is going to go up by a fairly significant amount. So the very same caravan is just going to jump instantly. And keep in mind that this is not even their ultimate form because it does take one turn for this to be activated properly. So you can see the so basically what's happening here is if you look at the ranks of the caravan masters, it's jumped four times. It's basically stacked four times in a single go. And it will stack more times as well once I click the end turn button and that turn and um, uh, start, uh, start another. But what exactly is really happening here? Well, I have finally figured it out. It isn't tied to an, the end turn. It isn't uh, tied to battles. It is tied to settlements. So, right there, I went from 9 settlements to 10 settlements in the campaign. And you can see that m the rank of my caravan masters has increased by 1. Now, it's not counting all of the settlements over here in my campaign. And the reason I believe it's not counting all of those is largely due to... It is largely due to the fact that not all uh, settlements are in, uh, not all settlements that I do have are actually in cafe. I'll explain how that uh, works in just a moment. But right now I have 10 settlements, it's obviously not stacking 10 times, but it will in uh, once I click that and turn button and go on to, uh, to, the, to the next one. Let's just go do that precisely. Now, the reason it is increasing at the end, um, the reason it's increasing at the end of every turn is because to account for the regions that I control that aren't in cafe itself. So I think it counted the regions because I do have five, uh, four regions in cafe itself. So it increased by four times to account for those. But it didn't account for the regions I have in he in uh, Lustria over here as Yan Bo. But it will take those into consideration at the end of the end turn. It did take into consideration the territory I did capture over here from Mazda Mundi. And uh, now we'll see it increasing 10 times, uh, to 10 times total. So I should be able to caravan masters at rank 11. And there you go, rank 11, caravan masters on turn 11. It is in the turn timer, and I can increase this even further uh, over here by taking uh, simple. This is not a serious ca a campaign, by the way. Uh, obviously, uh, things are going to start go looking really badly over here. Um, but if I win this particular battle, and I go recruit a caravan, rank 12 as it was expected as i knew it would happen so what's happening is that every settlement you control as uh any cafe in faction it's not just yanbo like let's uh i think i have enough movement range to just do hexwattle um i do i might have to lower the difficulty but that's a different discussion Celestia. 
But if I take Hexwat all over here in, in the campaign, it will increase to uh, it will increase to a total of twelve times in the campaign. But why is this happening exactly? Um, I used to think that was because of a bar that like a progress bar that was increasing over here in the Wuxing Compass. But then I looked exactly at the, what the Wuxing Compass was doing before. And then it kind of hit me as well as when I started noticing when it was increasing. I thought originally it was because when you ever you click the intern and some interns just wouldn't click, especially the transition from one compass to another. That is not the case. You also don't, and I was also wrong in saying that this is stacking over time. It does stack over time, but it doesn't matter when you activate the compass. You can play your early game campaign by using the Great Bastion and then activate the Warpstone Desert later on. What's really happening here is that Creative Assembly's uh, change to the Warpstone Desert didn't take into account for how the Warpstone Desert previously worked. The um, way it worked is that it would reduce your corruption per region. So what's really happening here is that for each region you're controlling, uh, you, are getting an you are getting this effect stacking again and again and again. So cargo capacity, sale of value of cargo, and Lord Recruit rank. This is precisely what is happening. So this is why on turn 11 over here in this very aggressive campaign, I can get caravans that are capable of like generating 30,000. And that's a rank free Lord, by the way. Like if I literally recruit um, a new Lord, give him cargo capacity, sale value, and also, um, also uh, get... Um, chance of a double move and cost of caravan bonus event, all that kind of stuff. Surely if I send this dragons. particular caravan out and max it out to capacity, I can get very, very close to 40,000 over here. So the larger your empire as cafe, the more the caravans are snowballing. But that's because the way the effect used to work on the Wuxing Compass is that it would reduce the corruption you had by four per caffeine region. So the more regions of cafe you would have, the more you could reduce corruption. Now, it was a meaningless effect that you never used in a campaign before. That's, I think, why they changed it. But it does seem that Creative Assembly, uh, that what's hidden behind the text, like what's not shown here, is that what it's really doing is it's increasing the va value here of sale of value of cargo, car caravan capacity, and lower crew rank by one, per region you control. But why, you might ask, why didn't it account for all the regions I controlled? Well, because it accounted for the regions I controlled in Cafe, but then it uh, accounted for the regions I held in Lustra. So the reason it takes one turn to properly increase the value to where it should be is because of the regions I hold outside of Cafe. So if you controlled only regions of Cafe, so Xiao Ming, Miao Ying, it would instantly increase, I imagine. But if you control regions outside of Cafe, like Yan Bo, then it takes one turn to, for the game to account that because the original system was yes. designed to account for the comp uh, for Cafe and regions only, but now it obviously is accounting for regions outside Cafe and it's increasing your overall it's increasing your overall um, cargo capacity, cell value, and caravan master rank by one for each region. Now, how do I feel about this when all is said and done? Um, now that it has become perfectly clear exactly how it's working, what exactly is happening, and how to use the system. Well, if it was a stacking effect, as I originally thought it would, then you'd have to constantly keep it active. That would have been annoying as crap. And... I would have hated it because it meant that you would never use anything other than it. But now that I've realized that I'm kind of okay with it to an extent, but I do certainly think some kind of balancing act needs to be made over here with respect to it, because it's clearly a bug. It's not an intended change. Let's remember that. It's not. This is not how the game is supposed to work. But at the same time, I think having an effect over here that can buff your caravans in cafe, especially for late game, is pretty useful. I 
do believe it becomes ridiculously powerful, but at the same time, to make it ridiculously powerful, you need to control a ridiculous sum of territory. By that point, you've already won the campaign regardless. So let me know what you guys think about this. Like, should the system stay potentially? Should they change it in some way, fix it? Like, I do like systems where the game does give you more resources as you scale up, but I do think that this is obviously an oversight and a bug. I do think the Warpstone Desert by default, like if it wasn't stacking, it would be pretty useless, honestly. Like you never want to use it because there's no way in any particular campaign that this would ever be justified to use as opposed to 15% income from all buildings or a 10% recruitment cost, casualty or replenishment at any point. So it does make the effect more useful, far too more, uh, far too useful. But let me know what you guys think. Costine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.